Boom. Boujou. Now we are live. Boujou. Welcome to uh, live episode of Indian Way with Johnny R. The podcast that records live from the Red Lake Nation. From the southern shore of the mighty Red Lake. And I'm your host, Johnny R. Quick update here. It's been a while since I've been able to uh, come online, get some free time. You know, for the last 10 days or so, I've been home with sick kids, cutting into my gym time, but that's all right. I still got these, though. Ooh, Ooh getting there. No, maybe not really. But yeah, I've just been um, busy with kids. Um, not much else going on, but I do have a sweating problem right now. And I have a gig Friday. I'll be playing at the uh, Seven Clans Casino employee dinner. So that'll be a lot of fun. I used to work at Seven Clans back in the day um, when I was younger. I think it was my first adult, no, second adult job. I was a blackjack dealer for about five years-ish when I should have been in college. But <clears throat> I did learn a lot out in that uh, casino. You know, a lot of the older workers befriended me, which is kind of cool. I learned a lot. That's where I learned uh, Jesus was a Jew and why the Jewish people don't celebrate Christmas. So, you know, I could have learned that in books, but I learned it first, not firsthand, but a wise old lady told me told me that story. So, here we are. I'm going live on, I think it's Twitter, and then I'm going to record this for YouTube, and then this is just my backup. And I also got a new light here. I ordered a set of lights a couple weeks ago, and they finally came in, so they're making me look, you know, Maybe if I look towards the light, it'll bring some some uh, much needed beauty to my face. But anyway, hello Twitter. I was trying to go um, Instagram, Instagram, but uh, I prefer Twitter because I have more followers and I follow more people on Twitter. So and I wasn't doing it on my iPad too, but it's too much of a hassle. If if you could see my setup, I'm scared to move because I got so much shit going on here. The light, I got the iPad, the camera, and my phone, and my MacBook. And these wires are touchy, so I'm trying to be very careful. Other than that, I'm uh, still looking to uh, find a job. I had a couple interviews. Was that last week? Last week? Yeah, last week. Um, I think they went pretty well, but I haven't heard anything back, so that's probably not a good sign. Um, put in a couple more apps yesterday or Monday whenever that was so hopefully get hired here pretty soon and I also was uh, interviewed for a second time for a um, a book this uh, comedian is writing about uh, indigenous comedians and I I don't know I guess my story is uh, pretty interesting to his publisher mine and I think Adrian Chalapa and uh, the 1491's our stories stood out so that's kind of cool you know trying to share my life experiences as a enrolled member of the Red Lake Band of Chippewa Indians, even though we say Ojibwe, uh, married father. Um, next month, actually, my wife and I will be celebrating 26 years together. And then in August of this year, it'll be our 20th wedding anniversary. So those of you that need uh, marriage advice, you know, don't come to me because I don't know. I don't know how my wife put up with me. For this long, bless her heart. So, as you can imagine, I'm uh, quite the handful. And, you know, with the alcohol from back in those days, I was uh, I was not a uh, pleasant person. But uh, as of right now, I think I'm about 90, 94 days sober, 95, 96, I don't know. Somewhere around there. And like I said before, I don't really plan on being sober. It's just uh, something that's casually happening so but once we get these uh good even numbers the plateaus then i'm gonna celebrate them well not celebrate them but um ask for praise okay i'm not gonna ask for praise but you know it's good to have the the clean mind clear mind when alcohol is not involved in my life i heard a um what was it is it joe rogan that had nikki glazer on where she talked about when she quit drinking you know, she had a lot more um, room in her internal hard drive, you know, to keep stories, to keep thoughts, to keep ideas coming. And I'm starting to feel that, too, because, you know, over the last three months, I've had a lot of pretty good ideas that I've been able to um, 
um, turn into jokes while on stage and those uh, have been coming in pretty handy so maybe maybe this sober life is for me but you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dwell on it because I might slip up I've I always have before so um, day by day day by day baby that's all I can do right that's all I can do um, what else oh uh, <coughs> um, Kobe Bryant passed away Sunday in a helicopter crash with his daughter and um, seven others and I was trying to figure out how you know I wasn't a Kobe fan I, you know I didn't like him I didn't I, know, I thought he was trying too hard to be Jordan and he just rubbed me the wrong way you know through his whole career I always found something something to uh, to not bad mouth him but you know bring up to the Kobe fans and like why did he miss the playoffs so many years and you know stuff like that NBA fan that's what we do we're not nice sports fans are not nice um, football fan well we'll talk about that later but NBA fans um, and it occurred to me you know he's around the same age two years younger than I am I'm 43 he he, he was 41 and you know the sports fans you know the whole sports community it's almost like a brotherhood, I suppose, sisterhood, you know, family, you know, we all, you know, talk shit about certain players, certain teams, and stuff like that, and that's how it was with, um, you know, how I'm with, like, as a Cubs fan, you know, the Cardinals, and the Twins, even though there is no rivalry, the Cubs and the Twins, I like to, you know, tease my, my relatives that are Twins fans, and Vikings, and Packers, Is that's just an ugly, <laughs> an ugly, um, Vikings and Packers is pretty ugly, you know, uh, I'm kind of embarrassed how low people will go to uh, how Packers fans insult Vikings fans and vice versa, and it gets a little ridiculous, and then NBA, Timberwolves don't really have any um, um, rivalries because they're, <clears throat> they're not good, they've never really been good, so it was just, I, you know, Kobe Brown when I was, I think, was tw I was 20 when he came in the NBA, and he was 17, 18, and I don't know, it just, he rubbed me the wrong way, he tried to, how to be Jordan, stuff like that, but, you know, later on in his career, I, I learned to appreciate what he was doing, you know, everybody, all, all the NBA players that played against him, um, uh, had nothing but good things to say about his work ethic, and also as a father, you know, that's one of the things that really got to me, you know, Kobe's daughter that died with him was uh, 13 and I got a 13 year old son and that just made you think beyond sports you know beyond um, beyond what everybody sees every day you know there's more to life than sports and rivalries and talking shit and that's just uh, where it was for me where I am right now and even today you know, I think af after the Cubs won the World Series I realized that sports you know, even though I was fulfilled with that Cubs win, now it's like, now what? You know, um, what? what's next after you win a championship? Your team wins a championship, you know? It's like, like my interest has, has waned, is that the word? You know, I haven't really been into sports since. You know, I struggled to uh, watch a full Vikings game. I barely watched the Timberwolves. Even the Cubs, too, I don't. Haven't sat through a full game in I don't know how long, and it just. Uh, I remember when I went to the Timberwolves, or not Timberwolves, um, the Warriors game when they're playing in the state when they made it to the Target Center that time. Uh, I was excited for them, fired up, you know, watching the Warriors on the big stage, and every time I got up, I cheered, yeah, cheered my, cheered my little heart out, and there was people, elders behind, Red Lake elders behind me, sit down, sit down, you know, just because I was cheering in the first quarter, fired up for them, and. Sit down. Jeez, guys, sit down. Like, and I start thinking, you know, you see all the fans yelling, you know, play some defense, get your hands up, pass the ball, shoot it, push it, stuff like that. They don't hear you out there. They're not going to listen to people in the crowd, you know. And After all these years of being a sports fan, you know, I yell at the TV, you know, and they can't hear me. They're not going to listen to me, so why I get so emotionally involved in I don't know that's where I'm at right now but 
start thinking about life after what happened to Kobe, you know. It's it's more than a game. Family first always it's one of the main things I I got out of that. So it's a dark time in the NBA well sports really, you know, even the, the soccer players in Europe were uh, honoring Kobe, you know. All of Italy where he was born, you know, all the players were just um it's like a worldwide grieving process for for Kobe Bryant and makes you makes you think, you know. Makes you uh think about what you're doing with your life. What are you contributing to the uh are you contributing to the betterment of your community or are you uh I read a lot of good articles. You know, I read one that uh, Dalton Walker uh, wrote for um, his column about how how much Kobe meant to Indian country, and that was that's true. You know, everybody for the last twenty years is, was a Kobe fan. And I read another one or a Facebook post from my my friend Byron Graves. <clears throat> he had a good he had a. Uh, Broke it down for Red Lakers, you know, how important basketball is for uh, the tribe. And that made me think, yeah, Red Lake basketball. You know, he mentioned my, my classmates, my teammates, you know, Derek Smith and Kevin on. And so that's I never really how much never really understood how much these teams mean to Red Lake, you know. Even I've been a big fan, Warrior fan, since first game was like 84, 85, and the late Junior Cobanes, the wee bad days, I was there. I think I made every game for about four or five years because my dad worked the, worked the clock, I think, back in those days in the 80s, mid-80s. And then I started playing, and, you know, basketball is uh, something that brings everybody together. You know, they, they say... I think because basketball is more accessible to uh, the poor communities, like in Red Lake, you know, because you know, I coached baseball and softball for years, and the main thing about that was uh, time. You know, you need a lot of time to put away to volunteer, and you also need uh, resources. You know, you need money for all the equipment. You need somebody to drag it around. You need to gather everybody up. You need to pick everybody up. But basketball, you see a court, there's a bunch of kids playing at the court. You know, even in the wintertime, I see kids at the courts, and... That's just um, how much basketball means to us, to Red Lake, to reservations, Indian country, as they say. But, um, yeah, tough to see Kobe pass away at such a young age, you know, with his daughter, the seven others, and it's just uh, it's sad how that all happened, you know, taking his daughter to play a game that they both love and him giving back to the community I think it was one of his basketball camps he was doing and it's just uh, life's not fair you know life's not fair you gotta live it to um, you're supposed to live it to the fullest but you know within your uh, own personal boundaries behave yourself and you know I've been known to uh, overindulge in life quite a few times back in my day so I don't do that anymore but yeah that's where I was thinking about Kobe even though I didn't you know wasn't my favorite but you gotta respect respect greatness that's what it is you know um other than that I just been trying to work out you know it's kind of tough having kids sick kids at home and you know I've been lifting weights even though I can't make it to the treadmill I could walk up and down the road, but uh, our road's so small, it's kind of, especially with all the snow, and it's kind of hard to get through through our driveway, and I don't want to get run over, so I don't walk around here. But I stay busy around the house, doing laundry, cleaning, you know, whatever. Keeps me busy, lifting weights, you know. I've been doing that for, I think, two months now, and I'm starting to feel a difference. I'm feeling good. You know, I'm, I'm down about 28 pounds, still in that area. I'm not going any lower, any higher yet. But that's just because of my eating. I got terrible eating habits. You know, I still 
I still have trouble fighting off the junk food and but um I'll get there. You know, I can I'm I'm more uh uh limber. I can reach things, you know, I can bend over and tie my shoes now and it's not a struggle getting out of bed anymore, even though I didn't do anything when I was fat fatter. I was still sore, but I'm feeling good. You know, my my um, blood sugar has been about uh, mid nineties to lower hundreds, so doing what I can. I'm just trying to trying to stay healthy, get healthy, stay healthier, or whatever. I don't know, but I'm trying to book gigs. Not as easy as uh, as it sounds. Not a lot. Not a lot of people buying comedians up in northern Minnesota, you know. And I don't have gas money to get south, so. But, yeah, that's where I'm at. That's what I'm doing. Um, I'm trying to get into writing. You know, I've been reading a lot. I'm getting back to my, to my Ojibwe. Get back to language. I remember I took this class. I took a year of Ojibwe, and I got A in the first semester, C in the second semester, so. Going through these notes again, just uh, to refresh the old noodle and try to pass on what little Ojibwe I know to my kids. So that's what I'm doing. Since I have all this free time, hopefully get a couple calls for uh, applications I put in this week. And if not, you know, whatevs. I'll just, I just need some, uh, some, some, some fresh capital to get my own shit going. You know, I can uh, take this, um, Globally, and I could be a full time podcaster, slash comedian, filmmaker, writer, producer, director, you know, stuff like that. But I just need time, I need money, and um, those things are hard to come by nowadays. So, hopefully, hopefully, uh, a rich uncle out there will give me a lot of money. Seed money is that what it's called? I don't know. Speaking of seed, seed and spark, and uh, Kickstarter. Our movie we did five, went on five years ago now is, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know. I, I'm at a loss. I don't know. I haven't seen the final cut. Nothing. That's what you get when you um, give over creative control to somebody else. I won't be doing that again. It was supposed to be... January 15th, January 15th came and went. I was supposed to be a couple, I was supposed to be a couple weeks after that. Those two weeks came and went, so. Got what, two days left at the end of the month that I thought uh, it should have been here by the end of the month. And I don't know, I'm just getting, getting stories, you know, getting excuses. It's about ready to pull the plug. It's embarrassing. I'm embarrassed. I, I'm embarrassed that I, I've produced nothing, nothing to show. And if I come across $20,000, you know, I don't know. It's, it's really embarrassing that I'm not able to, to do anything about it. So, but what you going to do? Um, but sit here and cry. I'm going to cry. I'm so sad that I'm, not, I'm just kidding. I don't cry. I do cry, but I cry ugly. So last time I cried, I was it was pretty ugly. It wasn't that it wasn't pretty. So that's why I don't cry in public. So, but I think that is all I have for today. You know, barring any more sick kids this week. Hopefully, I have another episode coming soon. And office space, man. I've been trying to get office space for 13 years here in Red Lake, and I. I get to run around, and then people don't call me back, and I'm just persistent. I'm getting pesty, and it's, ah, he's too pesty. Leave my needle now. I'm just not, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't feel the support. I've said this before, and I don't know, so I've been trying to do my own thing. Just time, time is a, uh, a, a hurdle right now. Time and money is my major hurdle, but I don't know. I'll figure something out. And we'll get back to, uh, we'll get back to winning, you know. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, 
Other than that, it's what is today? Wednesday? Yeah, it's Wednesday. Let's try to let's try to do this again Friday. We'll see how the live thing went with uh, Twitter. Maybe we'll do Instagram the next time. I know this one's going on YouTube, and I think this one's just a backup. So I don't know. We'll think of something. But uh, I think that's all I got. So uh, me, Gwitch, for listening, and uh, fuck Trump.